Hello and welcome to the second part of UTT Business Router's basic configuration. In this video, I'll show you the wireless configuration on the UTT Business Router. UTT Business Routers now include N518W, AC750W, AC750GW, and AC1220GW. As in the last video, we'll try to solve a question after finishing this one. The question is, how to block the access from certain hosts in the wireless LAN in an easy way. Okay, let's get started. There are five parts on the wireless. They are basic, security, Mac filtering, advanced, and client list. First is basic. It refers to the basic wireless settings. Let's take a look at the demo. Click wireless. This is a 2.4G wireless. Click Basic. Check this box to enable wireless. Usually we select AP mode here to configure this router as an access point. Set SSID, which is also known as the name of the wireless network, to what you like. I'm using UTD demo here. In wireless mode, we can select 802.11g, 802.11n, or 802.11bgn. Select the mode according to your need. The options in wireless channel range from 1 to 11, plus auto. If you select auto, the router will automatically select a relatively better channel. It is recommended to use channel 1, or 6, or 11. We can also use wireless interference detection softwares, such as Insider or Wireless Mom, to choose the most suitable channel. In channel width, 20 MHz is more stable than 40 MHz but has a lower speed rate. Usually, we recommend 20 MHz, unless there is little wireless interference. Check this checkbox to enable SSID broadcast. We can also uncheck it to hide the SSID. The MAC address here is the 2.4G BSSID of this router. With current firmware, we need to configure 2.4G WDS manually. There are three WDS modes, which we can select in operation mode here. In repeater mode and bridge mode, we need to configure the MAC address or BSSID of the AP, which we need to connect here, and its security mode here. In all the three modes, the wireless mode, channel, and channel widths on both ends must match. Please note that the LAN IP address and DACP pool should not conflict with those of the repeated AP. It is recommended to disable the DACP server on this router. This is the 2.4G settings. The 5G settings are basically the same, except that there are different wireless modes, channels, and channel widths. You can also enable WDS under 5G and scan an SSID to connect. It is quite convenient, but always remember to disable the DACP server and change the LAN IP address of this router to make sure there is no DACP or IP conflict. Next is security. There are four security modes. None, WEP, WPA slash WPA2, and WPA PSK slash WPA2 PSK. Let's look at the demo. Click security, select security mode here. If you're under a radio server, you probably want to use WPA WPA2, also known as WPA2 Enterprise. Otherwise, it is recommended to use WPA PSK, WPA2 PSK, also known as WPA2 Personal. And don't forget to modify your wireless password in the pre-shared key field. Next is Mac filtering. It enables you to control the access to the wireless network by MAC address. Let's look at the web UI. If you want to only allow certain devices to access your network, select only allow MAC address listed below. If you wish to block the access of some devices, select only block MAC address listed below. Then you can click add to add target devices. Remember to check Enable MAC Address Filtering so that this function can take effect. Next is the Advanced. 
all the advanced wireless options are listed here. Usually, we should keep them as default. RTS threshold specifies the packet size, above which an RTS CTS handshake will be performed before sending the packet. It ranges from 1 to 2347. Next is fragmentation threshold. The packets larger than the specified size will be fragmented before transmission. It ranges from 256 to 2346. Beacon interval specifies the time interval between beacons. The device periodically broadcasts beacons at a specified interval to synchronize the wireless network. It ranges from 20 to 999. DTIM interval determines how often the beacon contains a delivery traffic indication message. It ranges from 1 to 255. When short preamble here is enabled, it will improve the network performance. Uncheck this checkbox to enable long preamble. It can ensure the compatibility with some old 802.11b devices that require long preamble, but it will slightly reduce throughput. At last, Enable WMM to prioritize multimedia traffic, such as video or audio. If the wireless client does not support WMM, please disable this function. The last part is client list. Actually, it's the wireless client list. As you can see, all the wireless clients are listed on this page. Now let's go back to the question we had. How to block the access from certain hosts in the wireless LAN in an easy way? The answer is, make use of the client list. Click Filter All to add all the wireless clients into the MAC filtering list. If you only want to keep the clients which are now connected to your wireless network and block all the other devices, select only Allow MAC addresses listed below. If you wish to block some of the now connected clients, then delete all the others and select only block MAC addresses listed below. OK, done. As easy as pie. That is all for part 2 wireless. For more information, please feel free to go to our website www.uttglobal.com and as always, you can contact us by sending an email to support at utglobal.com. I hope this video is informative to you and I'd like to thank you for watching.